like or subscribe to my channel. Respond to every comment. What are you doing them to make them want to keep coming back to your channel? Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Tap that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming content. And if you've been rock with me for a minute, what's up? What's good? And welcome back. Today's Small Talk Saturdays, where we discuss important topics on this channel. And as some of you know, I've been discussing YouTube-related topics for the past few months. Today, we're gonna talk about what I would do if I had 100 subscribers. Now, if you haven't checked out my past Small Talk Saturday videos, I have discussed how to start a YouTube channel. I've discussed mistakes that I've made along the way. I've talked about increasing engagement organically. So definitely check those videos out after this video. So if you're ready to see what I would do if I had 100 subscribers, keep on watching. So if I had 100 subscribers, the first thing that I would be very mindful of is the tools that I have to start and making use of it to the best of my abilities. When I started, I had just gotten a new iPhone and that was it. <laughs> and so I would just prop up my iPhone in front of a window, which is actually what I'm doing right now. I have natural lighting right now and there's some overcast, which I like the best because that way the sun is not hitting my face too harshly. And we're pretty much good to go. That's all I did. Mind you, it's not necessary to have an iPhone Phone per se I think any updated smartphone should suffice as long as your camera at least goes up to 1080p I think that's the amount of pixels in the camera if I'm not mistaken my tech gurus correct me if I'm wrong you definitely need that if you want a crisp clear picture lighting super important because if they can't see you people are not gonna want to watch you this is what I look like when I turn this joint off Another important thing is audio, making sure your audio is very clear sound. I cannot tell you how many times I watched someone's video because they asked me to check their channel out and, and they started talking and I, I could not understand them because their audio was too low. For me, I just use the audio coming from my camera because I'm in an empty room and I'm pretty close to the camera. However, if you're using a DSLR camera, you might need an external mic or if you're in a space that is not just like an empty room, you will probably need other tools. So make sure you're using what you have to the best of your ability. But be clear, you don't need a brand new camera to start a channel or to have a channel. I've been recording my iPhone for a year and a half now. Will I upgrade to a camera later? Yeah, I will. But it's not something I was worried about when I had 100 subscribers. So lighting and audio are king. Please keep that in mind. The next thing I'd be thinking about if I had 100 subscribers and I want to grow on YouTube is my thumbnails. People who are new to YouTube arena highly underestimate thumbnails. They are so important, it's not even funny. Your thumbnail is someone's gateway to your channel. So if someone sees a thumbnail that looks grainy or if they see a thumbnail that isn't clear, like maybe it's too many images on the screen and it looks very busy. There's words here, big words here, small words here, 10 different people on the screen. It's very likely that person will not want to click on your thumbnail. And so that's something I try to stress to people when they are starting their channel, when they're trying to grow with subscribers, make sure that you're putting in time to your thumbnail. I think a quality thumbnail usually has one to three, three at the most, <laughs> solid images in it. If you decide to put text in your thumbnail, the text is large and it's big and it's bold. It's not in script, it's not necessarily in a fancy font. Big, bold, large, so that people can see what you're talking about. I think that contributes to a quality thumbnail. And also, if you have some type of color background, I think that also helps your thumbnail stand out. Of course, feel free to do your research on YouTube because a lot of people talk about thumbnail strategies. Having your face in a thumbnail increases your chances probably by 10 by 100 for someone clicking your thumbnail. Please don't Please make sure your thumbnail is clear. Please don't come out with a blurry thumbnail like you are shooting yourself in the foot. You can have the best video ever in 2020. If your thumbnail is trash, people aren't gonna click it. And that also leads me to titles because thumbnails and titles work together. Your title should be some type of attention grabber and it also should be optimized for search. When you're optimizing for search, you are trying to put yourself in the ranks so that your video will rank for certain terms. So if you're doing a cleaning video, your title ideally should have the word 
clean in it. It might have the season like summer cleaning, fall cleaning, something like that and make it an attention grabbing title. Having a good thumbnail and a good title will definitely ensure that more people are clicking on your video. Therefore, more people are likely to watch your video. The next thing I would do if I had 100 subscribers and I want to grow on YouTube is I would pay attention to the numbers, but not just vanity metrics, y'all. And vanity metrics are numbers that everyone can see. So like everyone can see your subscriber count and everyone can see your view count. Those are vanity metrics. You have to pay attention to the numbers that seriously matter, the behind the scenes numbers. The numbers that you need to pay attention to are your CTR, which means your click-through rate, and your audience retention. I was just talking about thumbnails and titles and why they're so important, right? Well, your CTR tells you what percentage of people are clicking on your video out of the number of people that have seen your video on the YT. So I'm gonna use myself as an example. I have a YouTube video here that I put out just the other day that's doing well for my channel. And when I go to my reach and then my click-through rate, for the very first day, it said 8.3. Normally, your click-through rate, if it's between four and 5%, that is considered solid. Anything higher than that is considered good and that is what you're aiming for. I know I aim for higher than 5% for my click-through rate. Now, mind you, this is just for the first day of this video. If I'm looking at for how this video has performed since it came out, I'll click on Sims Uploaded. You'll notice that the click-through rate has gone down to 6.1%, and that is natural. The more people that are viewing your video, your click-through rate is going to decrease. Don't be alarmed, because that's just the nature of YouTube. But yes, out of the 31,000 people that have seen this thumbnail come up, 6.1% clicked on the thumbnail. Trust me, I'm happy with that because this video is my latest video where I was talking about all these different half wigs with headbands and it's doing well for my channel. So I'm cool with it. Having a higher CTR is going to equate to more views and it definitely can equate to more audience retention. Audience retention is the amount of time, the average time people are actually spending on your video. And that's super important, especially when you have 100 subscribers because you have a goal to reach. You are trying to monetize your channel and you need at least 4,000 watch hours to monetize your channel. So the longer your audience retention, the more watch hours you will receive and the closer you will be to your 4,000 watch hours goal. You see how it's all connected? So I'm gonna show you my, in my analytics right here. If I go to engagement here, you'll see my audience retention on this video is six minutes and 22 seconds. 41.5% audience retention. That is your goal. You want to aim for 40% and above when it comes to audience retention. When you're starting out, you may find that it's hard to reach that goal. Like when I was at 100 subscribers, that was not my audience retention. It was not. Let me look at one of my older videos. Let me show you, okay? Okay, so I'm pulling up, this is probably like my second or third video ever on YouTube. It ended up picking up eventually, but look at this audience retention overall, y'all. One minute and 13 seconds, 18.5%. That audience retention is trash. You don't want that. <laughs> now, mind you, that another thing that I've noticed is that when videos do pick, gain traction and start to go viral, you will notice that your audience retention will decrease. It's just the nature of YouTube. The more people that are watching your video, you're probably being exposed to more people that are not subscribed to your channel. And therefore they're probably, my theory is, they're probably not invested in your channels of yet. So they are not watching your entire video. They may just be picking and choosing. Your video is being exposed to more people like that. And thus, yes, your audience retention will go down. Because I have seen another video, someone who was explaining their video that reached a million views and their audience retention at that time was at like 20, 2.5 or something like that so it happens it decreases but when you are when you first drop your video you want that audience retention to be on the higher end if it goes low over time I can understand but when you drop it you want to start off as high as you possibly can remember good audience retention will lead to a higher watch time and when YouTube sees that people are staying on your video for long periods of time, YouTube will reward you by pushing out your video. They will push and promote and they will do the work for you. And you'll be sitting there like, oh snap, <laughs> where are these, where are these um, views coming from? My audience retention, okay. 
you, you'll, you'll see the fruits of your labor. Now, the last thing I will say that I would do with 100 subscribers and I want to grow on YouTube, I would stay engaged with my audience. A huge part of YouTube that I think some people miss is connecting with an audience. You're not just looking at numbers and subscribers. These are actual people behind a screen watching you, looking for some type of value. What are you giving these people? What are you giving them to make them want to keep coming back to your channel? What are you delivering that's going to make them want to subscribe? Honestly, you have to ask yourself these questions. If you are having trouble growing on this platform, you have to have these honest conversations with yourself. And if you feel like it's not working, then you need to switch something up. I know for me, what works for me is staying engaged. I comment back to every single comment. It's hard for me to miss a comment because I go back and I, I'm able to look at my computer and search and see comments that I've missed and I can reply to them, especially if I can't do it in the moment. I'm not saying that you're gonna catch every comment and you have to because as people grow and get bigger on YouTube, they also usually have other business endeavors. So I understand not responding to every comment, but when you're starting off, you're getting five comments on your video, respond to every comment. And no, I'm not just saying just heart the comment, respond. And don't just say thank you, although thank you is nice, Respond with something that will elicit a response back from them. For example, if someone comments on my video about like, you know, thank you for putting this video out, this really helped me. My response normally is, thank you so much for watching. Which part helped you? Which part resonated with you the most? 10 times out of 10, people will respond back with something saying like, oh yeah, I really liked when you said this part. This really meant a lot to me. This resonated with me. I have an entire video talking about how to increase engagement organically on YouTube and on Instagram. I highly recommend that you check it out because I go, go in great detail. I even made up this acronym. I feel like I put in my all to that video. So I highly recommend that you check that video out. So yeah, y'all, this is what I would do if I had a hundred subscribers and I wanted to grow on YouTube. Let me know how you feel about this video down below. Let me know if these tips helped you. Let me know if this is something that you already been looking at look it's so easy to get caught up in subscribers and those vanity metrics because trust me i definitely have been the one to refresh my page several times just to see if my subscriber count went up i've done that <laughs> i still do that <laughs> But at the end of the day, I am hell-bent on my analytics and I pay attention to them. I watch them every day as well. And I know in my mind that that is what really matters. So I want to impart that knowledge on you as well. I also have a video on analytics and how to read it. So definitely check that out because, you know, some people get a little scared of the analytics tab, but I'm telling you, it will help you tremendously. Now, if you are new here, tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything coming up. And if you want to see my other videos from my YouTube series, check them out in my description box down below. I am also still offering some one-on-one -on -one coaching on YouTube and growing on YouTube and growing on Instagram. So if you want to check out my link, that will be in the description box as well. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.